Hi. Um, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a background in Xamarin Forms. Um, <coughs> this is so that um, you can, yeah, you can just create a background and then put you can put things on top of that background if you need to. I think it, um, this is something I only recently learned how to do. Um, it's one thing I struggled with when I, um, I ended up making a background that that was like 80, 80 lines of SAML. Uh, so I then uh, I be, <laughs> then I found out how to just use images. These could be any images. These could be images you created yourself. But I'll show you how to do that. It's relatively simple. But um, I've already created a, a SAML forms application. I've um, <laughs> I'm not bothered with the iOS. I've just made it made an uh, an Android solution. So when you first start, they give you a, this is just a, a, a also blank layout. It's not a fly out. Um, I'm just going to try and keep it simple. Uh, when you first get, when your app first builds, you get a page called main page at SAML. And it has this, you know, watermark text on it. That tell that, you know, that just gives you an example. Uh, I have it running here. So this basically show is the frame. So the frame is blue and it's, Welcome, it's got the label that welcomes you to Samarin Forms, which is that. And then there's three more labels, uh, as you can see, one, two, three. And the third label has a uh, has a, a link uh, to yeah to a website. But anyway, we're not going to we're not going to use any of that, so that will get removed, and we'll stop we'll stop running that. So first of all, I'm going to use a relative layout for this app. It'll be relative layout. Go vertical. So we need to specify the both vertical options on the horizontal options. We could both set them to set them to center. Close that. There you go. So we got our, we got our relative layout and everything will go inside the relative layout. Relative layout it's uh, used to position and size the views relative to the properties of the layout. If, yeah, um, okay, so first of all, we'll put a grid on top of this relative layout. So grid, we can specify the vertical options of the grid. And we can set that to fill and expand. So that grid should fill the entire page. We'll close that off. So we now have the grid up here. Then we can add the image. So this will be the background image that we're going to use. So we can give it a name and we can call it, we could call it uni, no, let's call it main underscore background. Okay, so now we need to specify the source of the background. So the source needs to go inside the resources and then the drawable folders. Um, these are two images that I have have on my computer already. I've used, uh, this is something I've used in a different project, but you can just drag, drop and drag them um, into the drawable folder, or you can right click the drawable folder, go to add, and then click on existing item, which will then, it'll open up your, um, it'll open up your folder, okay? So the source, so we need to, it needs, we need to, Specify the name. The, it needs to be the exact name of what it's, it's called inside the inside the drawable folder. So in this case, it's com, uh, computing. Sorry, not computer. Computing underscore eight hundred by four hundred dot jpeg. <coughs> okay. So we give it an absolute right. absolute layout. I don't know what happened with the intelligence. But the IntelliSense is very good in this army. It kind of writes itself. So I think the, this layout bounds is for the mobile devices. Same with the layout flags. I think we need to say all for that. We need to, we need to specify the vertical options. I don't think the horizontal options are important. So for the vertical options, we can just fill and expand. Uh, we can... Um, Aspect fill this 
changes the size of the image in case the image isn't big enough. Oh no, that would be the, yes, yes, sorry, that is right. Uh, we can say is visible. And we can say true for that. And then finally, height request. So let's say 650, that should be enough. And then we need to close that. No, oh, sorry. There you go. So we've closed the we closed the image. So that's um that should be okay. So we'll run that now <coughs> and see what it shows us. It should show us a cool background. I tried to when I was learning how to do this. I was uh, I I was trying to figure out if there's a way you can make a universal background that you can call upon rather than having to code it in. But I I'm not, I'm not sure. If there um, is a way, if there is, just let me know. And I, I'd appreciate that. But I found that if you want a background, if you want a universal background, like if you want the background to be the same on each page, you could just simply just make a grid at the very top of the SAML and just set the image, image at the top. Uh, as you can see, the image is, isn't quite big enough. So if I go 660, I think that should be, there you go. So yes, six height request 660 for that image anyway is just enough to <coughs> fill the entire fill the entire page. So that's quite cool, right? Um, it's pretty simple stuff. Pretty interesting to know if you're just getting into Xamarin forms, if you're doing it for like say an assignment and you want to you uh, you you don't want a bland looking kind of page with a with no background or, or having to code it yourself. Um, uh, okay, so you can actually put things on top of the background now. Um, you can put buttons on all the labels on top of it. It's kind of like a grid, grid in a like you like you do with a grid in a frame. So we'll do that now, and then we'll put a grid in. So grid. We can say row spacing. Let's say five um, row definitions. So we'll put some rows in, we'll just say auto, which I believe auto makes them all the, the same size. It, so it, it evens the rows exactly even. Uh, it tries, for the page anyway, it, try, it tries to go vertical options, then we can go fill and expand for the vertical options and then close that. <coughs> okay, so we'll close the grid. Okay. Then on top of this grid, we can put a frame. So let's go frame. Okay, we've got background color. So let's say mm, pink, because it stands out. <laughs> and then uh, we can say hash shadow equals true. And we can put some padding as well. Got padding, let's say five again for the padding. Corner radius, let's go zero for the corner radius and then grid. Dot row equals zero, and we could close that off again. Okay, so now we have the frame. I reload that. <coughs> we'll see what happens. Let's see if it puts a frame on top. Okay, so there, the frame is there. The frame is very small because we've not given it any, any. We've not like put columns in or anything like that, or really made any big rows. So we can instead um, put an image in there, which will make the frame bigger. It'll, it'll, the image will, in, will you know, it will increase the size of the frame. So we can do that now. Let's put an image in. <laughs> so we need another image. Let's call it logo. Call it logo, yeah. Second. Um, then again, we need to put the source of the image. Uh, so we'll use that Python logo. Dot JPEG. Is visible, yes. So we'll go true. 
then we can go aspect fill. Aspect fill, horizon. So we need horizontal and vertical options. Let's go our horizontal options, and that will be fill and expand. Vertical options, fill and expand. And then I think after that, it's just that we need the height and width requests. So height request equals 200. I'm just, I'm just making numbers up here. And let's go 200 for that as well. And then I think we just need to close that off. Okay. So that image should be fine. Oh, <laughs> I thought I requested twice. Sorry. Vertical. But what? What am I doing? Sorry. <laughs> Whip request. Okay, so there you go. So boom. We could change that because we because we because we're setting the for the height to a certain value. It sort of makes the image smaller, but we could we could probably just fill the page. Let's go six sixty like it was for that. So that should fill the yeah, that'll fill the entire page. So we can go three hundred for that. And then width request. Let's move that down. So let's say uh, one eighty. Maybe make that a bit bigger so we can see the entire image. Let's go 400. There you go. Great. So yeah, as you can see, that's so some of the stuff you can do. It's just it's relatively basic. It's not it's not really something super advanced. But I thought I'd share it with people. If people are thinking how do you, how do you get background? How do you get, how do you get a background in the Xamarin app? Well, there you go. Uh, you can just make a grid and just put an image in there. And that's that. But um, I think it's important to use them. Absolute layout bounds and uh, layout flags. <coughs> but yeah, um, it's pretty much pretty much that. Um, I was thinking that you can you can do uh, you can do a lot more. But I'm, I'm going to maybe upload some more videos um, with about summary forms. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope this helps anyone. Um, cheers. Thanks for you spending your time.